So I was told that it's good to start a presentation with a quote from an expert, but in MSF, they're not easy to find. So um, I've chosen Anoop Ravi, who's a logistician. I ran off to get a piece of string and tied the IV, intravenous, fluids to a corner inside the Land Cruiser. I used to wonder, there's got to be a simpler solution to this. So this presentation is called, How a New Approach to Field-Focused Innovation Can Deliver Better Outputs for MSF, or How We Can Do Better Than Pieces of String. I just want to frame this first. The, 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 the design challenge in this is an intravenous bag holder for Land Cruisers, but this is very much about the approach we took to it, not the product. The product is outside in the hall, and you can go and see it. So anecdotal evidence and internal MSF research has brought to light various barriers to innovation that exist within MSF. We wanted to find a, an approach to design and innovation that addressed uh, five common, com common, ba common barriers. Firstly, MSF has a poor reputation in some areas for collaboration. Um, and this is not only true externally, but also internally within the various country offices, within departments either, even. We are an emergency organization. Our staff are extremely busy. And there's not all that much time to step back and think about new approaches to um, problems or issues in the field, especially if we've got a solution that kind of works. There's a tendency to address field issues outside the field. Um, this can and has, in some cases, led to inappropriate solutions and time and money wasted. The problem of securing IV bags has been addressed. It might have even been addressed today somewhere in the world. Um, people are constantly tying them with bits of string or medical gloves. Um, what, we, what we often have trouble with is providing a fix rather than a patch to field problems. And lastly, MSF is full of um, highly motivated and competent people, but can you really ask a midwife with a good idea to also have the project management skills or the prototyping skills that she might need to realize it and turn it into a, a sustainable solution? So our aim was to design a process, design an approach, which would put MSF field staff at the center of, 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 of design. So embedding field staff within a product design agency, not just to be consulted a bit more than normal, but to take a lead in the design process and be a, a, a solid part of that, that team. To test this, we needed certain ingredients. So one, we needed a design challenge. And Idris on the, on the left uh, provided the, the IV bag problem. So a nurse in Congo told him that all nurses would love him if he sustainably solved um, the problem of, of hanging intravenous bags in land cruisers during patient transfers. So it's a, at the moment, it's a glove or a piece of string, or sometimes the patient's carer holds the bag, or sometimes the patient holds the bag. It's not always particularly safe, and, and, and it, becomes a, it becomes an issue when it doesn't need to be. Josie and Anoop were, were chosen as, as the MSF part of the design team, partly because they've got, good between them, good field experience, but particularly because they're a nurse and logistician. So the two profiles that are probably most affected by this, by this problem. They've both run numerous times to find something to, to hang an IV bag. And the last ingredient was Fearsome, so our design partner. This was important because we needed a design partner that shared a vision of how co-design could work when taken to its logical conclusion and, and, a, and a willingness to experiment with approaches to get there. What they also brought was uh, an, an appropriate physical space in which to base the, uh, base the project team. A kind of evolving tools and workflows that could be co-opted and adapted to a new approach. And uh, the lovely Nils, a product design engineer who would guide the MSF part of the team through the design process. So to, to evaluate this, we had several data sources. Uh, they're listed here. But most importantly, the post-project interviews. So these were done with everybody who was involved with the project, and we used um, qualitative methods um, analyzing the data thematically to see if we did actually address our, our five barriers, but also to see what the factors for success were, what the challenges were, and whether the participants thought the approach could scale or be transferable. So a bit of a, re a report card on, on the barriers. Lack of collaborative culture. 
So the interdisciplinary collaborative approach seemed to work really well. The, the inputs that were there externally within the team, the nurse and logistician and the designer, they worked well together, they brought different things, but also outside inputs from the ambulance service and a conversion company who actually convert Toyota Land Cruisers for MSF. From, from all these inputs, the, the prototypes and the ideas, the, sorry, the requirements that were built were very solid and ideas and prototypes were able to be tested very rapidly. Uh, lack of staff time. So taking Anoop and Josie out of their day to day and giving them three weeks um, really helped them to consider the challenge from a new perspective. They both admitted to turning up with the solution in their heads already but these solutions were discarded within a day or two. Um, inappropriate solutions. So because of the first-hand experience of the problem that was present within the field, all of the participants believed that they had a high level of confidence in the final prototype. So from the MSF side, they thought that they would not be wasting their colleagues' time if they wanted to take this for field testing. From the fearsome side, they said they had a, uh, a, a very high level of confidence because they hadn't had to make many assumptions at all in the, in the ideation or design process. They had people there who knew the space uh, and, and, could, and could, uh, could push back against, against you know, bad ideas or misunderstandings. Uh, patches, not fixes. So for fearsome, this was, three weeks was a short amount of time. Obviously, the MSF guys were wondering what they'd do with the other 14 days once they solved the problem on, on day one. But, but actually, three weeks meant a rigorous approach to all stages of, of that design process. Neither of the MSF uh, participants think they'll ever have to run for a piece of string again if this is, uh, if this is implemented. Lack of skills. So, what Josie and Anoop lacked in terms of state skills, Nils and the fearsome team were able either to provide or facilitate. Um, and the MSFers came away with actually a whole load of new skills, which potentially they could then take into the field to, to, their, to their normal work, from design thinking to 3D printing. And that's the only time I'll rhyme in this, uh, in this presentation. <laughs> so we believe that to a, to a good extent, we addressed the barriers that, we, that we'd intended to. But also interesting was the, um, the other insights that came out of the project. So this is the board we use to thematically, thematically evaluate the data. Um, and you'll see there's more than five categories on there. So I'll just take you through those other insights. Firstly, the testing environment proved vital. Um, Anecdotally, from the MSF participants, they'd both seen people come to the field with ideas or solutions that once they'd arrived were immediately, obviously inappropriate. They felt that having a strong testing environment mitigated this risk, which not only saves them time, but it saves field people time. Like field visits are fairly heavy for field teams. This mitigates that risk and, and, and hopefully means that a visit will be productive. Oh yeah, so here's a, a little bit more of the video. This is the actual testing environment. I don't know if you can see, but it's actually a wooden section of a land cruiser uh, with the prototype within it. And you can shake it around to simulate uh, Congolese roads or whatever. <laughs> so you can actually go and do this at lunchtime. It's just out there. <laughs> so informal networks were, were, were really interesting. Josie and Anoop kind of naturally, when they were doing that information gathering, wanting to kind of sense check ideas, they got in touch with colleagues and peers through Facebook and WhatsApp and, and, and the rest. And actually the engagement was really strong. And what they ended up creating was near real time feedback loops on all these things. So they could get feedback to an idea kind of like that, which was really powerful. And from, from Fearsome's point of view, this was golden because not only do they have two MSF field workers in the team, but also access to this breadth and depth of experience and perspective um, outside of the team. Lastly, um, no, not lastly, there's more. Um, <laughs> in terms of project time and intensity, both the MSF participants likened the experience of the project to being in the field. They were in a, a foreign, exotic country, Scotland. Um, 
they lived together, they worked together, they had a shared purpose. And they brought this kind of intensity into the fearsome office, which uh, the general, general director of fearsome thought fueled massive amounts of progress. Team profile was also important. Um, this, turned, this, this ended up being called the Goldilocks question. So between Anoop and, Anoop and Josie, they have about uh, 10 missions or 10, you know, 10 jobs in the field between them. They both, they both talked about how this was a success factor and that maybe someone very early in their MSF field career wouldn't quite understand the, the problems and limitations that come with working in the field or the opportunities. And maybe someone you know, who's 30 years into the field maybe has given up trying to change the, the simple things. So they kind of, they kind of ag agreed on you know, someone who's frustrated with the status quo but not resigned to it. That was the kind of ideal profile. <laughs> In terms of MSF support, there's kind of three parts to this. Firstly, completely unexpectedly, Josie and Anoop both said that being invited to use their field ex expertise to solve a field problem, but while they weren't in the field, actually made them feel really valued and invested in. Like they were using stuff that they'd learned in the field to, to help their colleagues. The, the second part was the MSF communications network. So they documented the project through blogs, and this was shared very widely and it actually got a lot of engagement and they felt that this engagement not only kind of enriched the project but again added to that feel, feeling, feeling of value. And lastly, uh, good project management. So the, the, it's light project management but it, they felt that it provided them with some perspective, some targets and some milestones. They felt they could very easily get lost in IV holders um, and this kind of pulled them out and made them think a bit broader. Last, but by no means least, the process. So neither MSF participant could name a process internally for design or innovation. But this defined everything, from the, from the lab testing, to the information gathering, to the skills and the tools needed. Um, so this was, was really important, although it's got the least amount of words on the slide. <laughs> so we think we addressed the barriers that we set out to address. Um, we gathered a whole load of other insights um, around, around what, can, what can work in projects like this and stuff that can be taken forward into other projects. But the last question for us was, would this scale? Would, it, would we be able to adapt it, apply it to more complex problems? And this question was asked directly in the interviews to all the participants. So the, the overwhelming response was yes. Um, the general director of Fearsome said, this approach isn't just some, about product design, it's not just about um, service design, this, this speaks to the fundamental principles of design. It can be applied anywhere. But those yeses did have some clarifications and some considerations with them. So the IV holder is a very self-contained, nicely defined design challenge. If you blow that up into something like warehouse management, everything changes. Can we take a similar multidisciplinary embedded MSF approach to designing the strategy for a much more complex problem? So at the very start, when you're doing your project planning, how are you going to break it down? Who are you going to involve? Can that also be done with an embedded MSF element? Should we be bringing in multiple specialist collaborators at different stages of the, of, of the, of the, of the design process, bringing in value as and when it's needed? Can we build on the idea of field staff being the perfect design teams or part of the perfect design teams? Um, it worked very well here, but if you, have a, if you have an issue that affects 10 people's jobs rather than two people's jobs, can you still represent those people within a, within a, within a design team and keep it agile and flexible? Informal networks, it really, did, they, it really was quite surprising how powerful this was. Can we use these better, like peer-to-peer -peer support, um, communities of practice, uh, you know, sim simply using colleagues who are, who are obviously very willing to, um, willing to contribute. Continuity of approach was interesting, so taking what we did, what we did which seemed to be fairly successful, and, and, and iterating on it, making it better, um, the, the wooden land cruiser section was a very good lab test, but if you're trying to redesign pharmacy, how do you represent that in a, in a, in a workshop? And the last one was buy-in buy -in and governance. So how do you keep buy-in high, governance light, and productive? Like, governance is oft, often, 
used as a dirty word, but it can be a very positive thing. Like, how can we, how can we take the lessons from this and apply it to bigger, bigger challenges? So um, just a huge thanks to the MSF guys who were awesome um, and all of, the, all of the team at Fearsome, uh, particularly Idris and Nell at MSF UK, but also everybody who engaged with the project, whether it was through the blogs or, or, or whatever, like it was, it was, it was really great. Um, I'd love to talk to people about this kind of stuff uh, and hatch more plans, so come and find me if you'd like to.